Hello and welcome to Chattanooga, Tennessee and inside of McKenzie Arena. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. Exciting college basketball coming up. It's the 8-1, number 21 in the nation, Mississippi State University Bulldogs on the road, battling the 7-1 Chattanooga Mops. Steve Rule Shry here with my friend and analyst, Will Boyne next and a great tilt coming up. A really great tilt between two teams that are off to a great start and they're not conference portions of their schedule. Absolutely. We're going to take a look at the AP Top 25, some of the best contenders in the nation this year, women's college basketball, right on top and still dominant for years and years, South Carolina, followed by UCLA, Stanford, Iowa, NC State, Texas, rounding out the top 10. And between the top 10 and 20, UConn, Utah, Baylor, a lot of great programs. Tennessee, number 20 in the nation, right up the road. Mississippi State, number 21, and here in Chattanooga today for this one. Yeah, LSU trying to repeat as national champs, and, uh, and really SEC teams, five of those clubs in the top 25. We're going to take a look at the two top scorers for Chattanooga. In fact, they've accounted for nearly 50% of all scoring for the Mox so far this season. Jada Gwynn, Raymond Thompson, they've been just fantastic, Will. Jada Gwynn has such a nice touch around the rim. Her penetration really is the key to this offense. Her being able to get into the painted area and kick out to shooters like Raven Thompson has been a huge, huge deal for the Chattanooga offense and making them go this year. We'll keep an eye on Gwynn and Thompson today. It's going to be a great matchup between the Mox and the Bulldogs. John, let's take a look at the starting lineups here today. Seagram Olaf's daughter, Addie Border, Jada Gwynn, Raven Thompson, and Carson Murphy all getting the start for Chattanooga. Yeah, we talked a lot about Jada Gwynn and Raven Thompson, but you know, Addie Grace Border, and she adds a lot to uh, in the backcourt for Chattanooga. Have to get her going. She's going to have a, her a lot of pressure here this afternoon. And for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State, Goni, Jordan, Park Lane, and Powell all getting the start. And we're going to keep a close eye on Lauren Park Lane. 1,994 career points, just a few away from that big clip of 2,000 points playing college basketball. She's got such a high motor. She's a great ball handler and, and uh, like you said, can really fill it up. Leads all players in assists in her career for the Mississippi State Bulldogs, number one in the country. Quick drive, the floater off the glass, and the mocks get the board. We talked to Sean Poppy and, uh, before the game started, and he said, look, we're going to have to control pace. Uh, you know, we're not really going to crash the boards after shots. Sean Poppy thinks they got to shoot around 40 to 45% to win this ball game. Thompson near the low post. Quick drive. Knights are way down in there, and the shot's off the mark. Battle for the ball, and Jordan comes away with it. Mark Lane, the entry pass, and right away a step. Goni going to work. Junior from Lincoln, New Nebraska, and she's been great. Played for Miami before joining the Bulldogs, and that height, six foot four, is going to be something to keep an eye on. Yeah, she got her first career start in that game against Miami. Seven points to go on, ten boards. She has great length and athletic to go with it. 38% from the floor this season, a couple of points per game. Here's the Mox, Thompson all the way around the arc. Addie Border, back across, Olaf's daughter doesn't like the look from the straightaway. Driving in from the wing, now here's another look from Murphy. Murphy into the lane, fires, and this one is wide right. It was an okay look, but Chattanooga, Sean Poppy said what concerns him about this, he said, look, we still have to penetrate and kick. We, we just can't pass the ball around the perimeter and, and jack a shot when the shot clock runs down. We still have to get action going to the basket. Portable inbound for Chattanooga. Love the Mississippi State uniform. Start Vegas on the front. Really like the look. Here's a turnaround. Jay, and that goes. Jaden Quinn, the graduate student from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. She's been so fantastic all year long. She's been great. Averages 17 points a game, and like we said, her and Raven Thompson have really carried the water for Chattanooga offensively. Rogers flipped that back over to Jordan. She's going to pull up from the straightaway and bury the three. Ja'Kia Jordan, she's played a ton of basketball to transfer from Tulane. Just a few points into this one, getting started in Chattanooga. Thanks for being with us. It's college basketball on ESPN. Mox with the ball. Murphy flips it away to Porter. 
Porter driving. Goni has her on the elbow, so she'll kick it outside. And now the three for the box goes from long range. It's Sabrin Olaf's daughter. That's the action that we were just talking about for offensively for Chattanooga. Let's get some momentum going to the rack and kick it out to the three-point line. And, and they like that if they can get that shot all game. Here's another three in response from the Bulldogs, and it's short. Olaf's daughter on that last trip up the floor, getting the long ball. She's averaging about seven points per game, started all eight games this year. She's been so good for the Mox for so long, 40% from the floor this year. Has started a lot of games for Chattanooga and survived the coaching change, so that tells you what kind of talent she is. She's played a lot of games here in Chattanooga. UTC, Chattanooga, and the Mox waiting for some space. She picks it up on the elbow. Two seconds on the shot clock, and Olaf's daughter a bit too much on that. Mississippi State is so good defensively, and what they have had great success in doing this season is they play in your face in an up-tempo style of defense without fouling, and that's been such a key for them. They just they don't really give you anything. Mark Lane gives it off. Jordan right away the whistle. This will go back to the box. Really taking care of the basketball, Mississippi State, and they don't send you to the free throw line. They do a great job moving their feet on defense. Any border defended way back by Park Lane. Porter distributes this to Murphy. Chattanooga going to work. There's the floater from mid range, and it skips off the back of the iron. Jordan. Going to drive quickly, flip back out to the wing. Park Lane looked like she wanted to pull up. Bulldogs, here's the three, and that goes. Mississippi State back on top. Yeah, that was a great shot. That Chattanooga did a great job defensively. They did a really good job closing out on potential shooters, and, and that's just a tough shot. Eddie Porter walked it up the floor. Jada Gwynn drives to the elbow. Goni is there. Too much height, so she flips it outside. Looking for the corner. Thompson keeps this moving, and the shot comes up short. Park Lane. The three-point line dishes this across to Rogers. Bulldogs communicating so well. They're really good at talking to each other. All the, all the really good teams have that in common, don't they? They communicate well on both ends of the court. A lot of contact as Park Lane lets it go. Park Lane has been so special for so long playing college basketball. This season, 10.1 point, points per game, 57 assists. The number 16 transfer recruit in the country as rated by ESPN and regarded as one of the best point guards in America. And we can really get it done. And, and if you're in the SEC, the one commonality between the SEC teams is they have great guard play. And from team to team, and you just have to have that part of it if you're going to compete in one of the best conferences for women's college basketball in the country. From the corner, Bulldogs, that rattles around and won't go. Goni fighting with it down low and takes a step. Addie Grace Porter, she is not tall in stature, but she does a great job as a guard in rebounding the basketball. It's just a want to. She consistently has games where she's six, seven rebounds. Junior from Lebanon, Tennessee. Chattanooga taking their time, getting set on the elbow. A pass over to Thompson. Thompson splits the double. Back outside, there's the long ball, and it's off the mark. Shepard, the true freshman, kicks this close side to Jordan, who takes it down inside, and a lot of contact from the low post. That's what Mississippi State wants to do. Let's turn this into a track meet. Let's get up and down the court and see if Chattanooga can keep up with it. Well, so far, neck and neck between Mississippi State's Bulldogs and the Moxwell. Yeah, up and down, and that's exactly what we thought we were going to be in for. We're going to take a break and be back with more college basketball in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Chattanooga, Tennessee, college basketball on ESPN. Here's the bench boss today for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Michelle Clark Hurt stepping in. Sam Purcell out with an illness. Yeah, from nearby Dalton, Georgia, just down the road. And 
Michelle Clark Hurd, she is no rookie. She has a pretty impressive career mark, 252 wins to go along with 147 losses. She's had stops at Kentucky State, Western Kentucky, most recently Cincinnati. Jordan at the line, the senior from New Orleans, Louisiana. Transfer from Tulane. She knocks down the first makes it a two-point game. Hey, thanks for being with us this afternoon, wherever you may be. Gabriel Shry here with Will Poindexter, college basketball on ESPN. Jordan gets pulled at the line, three-point game. So far, not a great performance from the floor for either program. Mississippi State's Bulldogs, 33% as a team. Chattanooga, 25 yeah, Chattanooga's turned it over a couple of times. They've been able to survive that on the defensive end. I think what's promising for Chattanooga is they're kind of muddying the waters a little bit. And that's that's what they thought they needed to do coming in. Make it a little bit dirty down low. Anna Cohn, the true freshman, leading the nation in shooting percentage from three-point land, assuming that's why she's on the floor now. She can flat out shoot it. She once had 19 threes in a high school game. Out of the Masters Academy in Oviedo, Florida. She's really something special and excited to see how she develops for Chattanooga's Mops. And especially in Sean Parker's offense, how they love that penetration and kick. She is just a sniper from the outside. And she is going to have to, you know, as any freshman, going to have to deal with the rigors and the physicality of, of the Southern Conference as she gets into conference play, but a very promising future. Great entry pass on the backdoor feed and can't finish it. What a great look. Uh, just a dime piece. Could not finish it. Ellie Solga is up the floor. The handoff. Back across to Porter, who got that board. Thompson along the three-point line, and that Bulldogs defense back in a shell. Gaia. Kick to the corner, and Cone fires for three and gets it to go. That's what we're talking about. And she contended with a very difficult pass. The shooters typically like to catch it in the flow of shooting. She had to reach down for the one hop and still drain the three. This is Park Lane with a floater. It's short. We're tied in Chattanooga, and that's a jump ball. Yeah, did they call a jump ball, or did they call a foul? Sean Poppy does not like that at all, as you can see. I think they did get a foul there. Yeah, they're going to get all solved as for that. So the Bulldogs will inbound. This is Park Lane who's on the baseline. Long feet onto the floor is Jordan. Lauren Park Lane defended by Addie Porter. Gets the screen from the straightaway that goes. Got to get around that with a little bit more of a sense of urgency if you're Chattanooga. You cannot let Park Lane shoot it. She is one of the best players on this team, and she is so fast, has such a quick release. 32% from out there this season, and you can see that success early here in Chattanooga. Quick delivery off the glass, comes up short. Second from point blank that Jada Gwynn hasn't gotten a friendly bounce on. The intercept by Raven Thompson. Thompson knifing her way inside and loses the orange. I think that was Park Lane with the strip, and it went off of Raven Thompson, so Mississippi State will take possession. Good transition defense. Park Lane will walk it up the floor. 1,997 career points. Lauren, defended by Cone, floats it outside. Quick drive, wants that turnaround. Jay fires the floater and it just rolls over the front of the iron. Ooh, tough shot. She's got the friendly roll. Rakaia Jordan from Tulane, the transfer. Bulldogs on a 5 nothing run. All the way around the arc. Porter looking inside. Cone from the straightaway, fires for three, and it's wide right. He likes setting that high screen for, for Cone to catch off of the screen. She's a really good shooter on the move, the catch and release. Montague, the true freshman up the floor, looking to pass it to her and just couldn't connect. She's out of Atlantic City, six foot six. <laughs> and it just seems like when you get in the SEC, you, they, you're so deep on the bench and you roll folks in that have great size. 
definitely excited to see how she shakes out for the Bulldogs, one of the best in the country. As Raven Thompson takes the entry pass and puts it in off the glass. Yeah, defensively, the trailer was slow to get there and allowed Raven Thompson to really get the position she wanted right on that low block. That snaps the 5 nothing run by the Bulldogs to Mississippi State. Here's another look at that. Quick entry pass down to Thompson. So she'll be at the line for the old-fashioned three. Yeah, Raven was looking for the defender when she caught it. The defender wasn't there, and, it, uh, and good on her for realizing that. And the late rotation caused the foul. Two-point game, Bulldogs out in front. 90 seconds left in this first. Quick drive, and that one doesn't drop. I like the look there from Jordan. Had the time and space to shoot that. And more times than not, she's going to knock that down. Burrell back across to Gwynn. Looking down low to Thompson. Ball's loose. Bulldogs have it. Great defense there from the Bulldogs. That was uh, Miracle Shepard, the freshman. Steps around the defender and can't bang home the mid-range. There's Addie Porter, what are we talking about? Just the defensive powerhouse for the rebounds. <laughs> it's really our house is right. She's a rebound machine tonight. She just has a knack for some players have that, don't they? Just a knack for being around the basketball. And Addie Porter definitely does that. All five plus four inches of her. Here's Cohen from long range that rattles out. One for three from long range tonight. That was halfway down. That was a tough shot, too. You mentioned her 19 threes in high school. That was a state record in Florida. Unbelievable. Shot clock has 14, game clock 18. Park Lane loses it for a moment and keeps it going. Here's one from downtown, and she gets it to go. Kai Jordan has such a pure shot, and she just gets it away so fast. Two seconds, and the clock will expire on our first period of play. An exciting start here in McKenzie Arena. We'll take a break in a five-point game for College Hoops in just a moment on ESPN. Today's drone footage brought to you by Crystal Air. Kick off your next vacation by Crystal Air. A look at the beautiful scenic city, Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're inside of McKenzie Arena. Gabriel Shry here with Will Poindexter for college basketball on ESPN. It's a close one after one quarter play. Bulldogs out in front by just five over the Chattanooga Mocs. Yeah, Mississippi State shooting 38% early on, Chattanooga 30%. Five turnovers for Mississippi State early. They're not a team that turns the ball over a whole lot, so that's news for them. Olaf's daughter to Raven Thompson, heavily defended by Powell. Cone working to shake Jordan. There's Thompson down low, swatted away by the Bulldogs, and Goni gets the board. Yeah, that was Poe underneath, and it's going to be a tough shot for Raven Thompson. Chattanooga does not have a whole lot of size. Lauren Park Lane knocks down the three, and that puts her at 2,000 career points. What a career. She can just flat out shoot it. I mean, and it's not just she, – she does it on both ends. She plays with an intensity that is uncommon. She is just so energetic, just a spark plug. Chattanooga working it all around. Wow, what a play. It was a fighter way down inside. Boy, Chattanooga is really looking for that. Carson Murphy, they got to have a little bit more depth off the bench. Carson Murphy comes in averaging six points a game. That was a great, confident drive. Park Lane is stacking him up now. Hit the three, the last trip up the floor, drops that one in for mid-range. She's been so special for a long time. Came to Mississippi State from Seton Hall and made a big impact there as well. She's off to a great start, and you're right. That is going to be a problem for Chattanooga. Murphy taking her time out on the wing. Cone, dicing it up in some danger. Chattanooga, the shot clock at three. Cone sidesteps, fires from long range, and gets it to go. Yeah, for a lot of folks, that's not a great shot, but for her, it's a great. Anytime she's shooting, it's a great shot. She's playing a lot more early in this ballgame than she has, only averaging 16 minutes a game, and she's been in there a lot so far today. Two for four from the floor, six points already. 
On the close side, there's a three. I think Thompson might have got fingertips on that as it skeeters over the baseline. I think that was partially deflected out with you on that. Arjun remains the same two minutes into the second period. A five-point game. Bulldogs leading the Mocs. Talk to Sean Poppy, too, about, you know, what does it mean to get a team like Mississippi State in that's your, your home court? He's like, look, you know, our program is, you know, historically we have hosted big games like this. So it's something we want to continue doing. This is a home and home. So Chattanooga will go to Starkville next year. Murphy to hand off to Cone. Steps around Jordan and fires from long range. She's three for five. She is a sniper. I mean, just a flat out sniper. What's the mocks have been to? Bulldogs to respond. Shepard, the true freshman. In some danger, stepping away from Porter on the front court. Working with that ball and driving into the paint. Ball's loose. Diving for it. Mox have it for the moment. Thompson trying to escape traffic. Wonderful defense from Addie Grace Porter. She ended up with her on the floor, keeping that alive for Chattanooga. Here comes Quinn. And from mid-range, the J pops out. Unusual struggle for her in the early game here. when It's been the point-blank shot so far. She's over 3. Jordan ladles that in off the glass. Nice play. Makes it a four-point game. Going to Porter. Porter. Way back. Getting this away from Shepard. And now it's Thompson. Going. All the way to the far side of the floor. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Porter drives up to the elbow, and shot clock expiring. Tries to go up top, taken away by the Bulldogs. You know, way too much length for that to work for Addie Porter. Great pass and finish, and the whistle as she takes it up. Sean Poppy didn't like that, but I think what it was, it was a, it was a hit to the head. And anytime you do that on a drive, you're, you're going to get that call. I believe that's a Chattanooga timeout. Mox take a timeout. Here's another look back at what happened. Yep. Yeah, you're going to get that. Any, 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 any contact of the head, you're going to get that. Six-point game. We're going to take a quick break and be back with more college basketball in just a moment from Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Helmy took the team to the 2023 NCAA tournament after winning the program's 19th SOCON tournament title. It was a remarkable tournament run uh, for a team, really, that was treading water for most of the year. And then they just got in the tournament and just got hot at the right time and ended up winning that. It was just remarkable. Six-point game. The Mox walking it up the floor. To the close side, Gwynn. That's some height she's got to go around. Montague giving her trouble out along the three-point line. Quick drive, this is loose on the baseline. And Ellis Aldo's back in there for Chattanooga, and, and they're going to need to get Addie Grace Porter a little bit of a break. She, she's been running around a lot, high tempo defensively, so big minutes for Ellis Aldo's right now. If you're just dropping in, we've got a great, a lot of fun matchup here today. SEC, SOCON going at it. Mississippi State ranked number 21, 8 1 on the year, and the mocks off one of their best starts ever, 7 and 1. Cone, three ball specialist, looking inside, swatted away, and Jordan, Jordan and the Bulldogs up the floor, the floaters off the mark. This has been fast paced, up and down, a very entertaining first quarter here. Ellis Salvez trying to shake the defender, Kaya drives down inside and passes it back up top from the low post. Known as three for five today from the floor. All three balls. Gwynn with five on the shot clock. Takes it inside and mails it in off the glass. Jada Gwynn got a great matchup right there. She had uh, Montague on her and just beat her to the rack. Rogers in a bit of trouble. 
Warren Mark Lane crossed 2,000 career points today. Look back across to Rogers, and there's the call. Mississippi State likes to run these, these, this offense. It's, it's like a horns offense or an A-set offense. They like two high screens that are on the elbows and, and let the guards work off that. You can get a dribble drive there and a kick to the corner, or you can pick and roll from it. You can do a lot from it, but they do that a, a lot. And it works for them. 31st nationally in assists per game. Second in the SEC, 17.8. And the Mocs fired up about that. Great defense. I mean, Chattanooga, you know, so far defensively, I would think Sean Poppy would describe them as, you know, okay so far defensively. But today, they have turned the volume up defensively so far in this one. It's a four-point game in Chattanooga, 420 left in this first half. Gwynn shakes Rogers in traffic, falls loose for a moment. Montague loses her. The floater is short. Gosh, that's Montague. She is so has such long arms, and that is, she is tough defensively for a guard, especially. Mark Lane carried that. Yeah, there is a lot of, of hands down low too. They're they're letting these two teams play today. I mean, it's it's been on both sides, but there is a lot of grabbing down low right now. Cone fires from long range, and it's short. Great grab. Park Lane running up the floor. Four-point game to extend that lead, and it's short for the Bulldogs. Locks get it back. 25-21 here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Three and a half left in the first half. J.D. Gwynn directing traffic. They're trying to get a screen for her, but... Man, at Mississippi State, they just stick to you defensively. And that's going to be an illegal screen on Chattanooga, and, and they got Jada Gwynn on that. Jada Gwynn has been so special for the Mocs of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Great this year with 17.3 points per game, 5.5 rebounds per game through these eight games they've played already, but really just a great career collegiately. Top 10 all-time ranking in program history for Tennessee Tech as well. She was named All-OBC second team there, a tournament MVP for Tennessee Tech. She has two fouls now, just Jada Gwynn. Going to have to be really careful not to pick up her third before the half. Great look outside, and that was short as the Mox can't wrap it up in play. So Raven Thompson going to get Sigrun Olaf's daughter, and I uh, you would think Carson Murphy now going to check in. Let's see if she gets. She's going to get feral. So they're going to trust Jada Gwynn and not foul here with 2.57 left to go until halftime. Four-point game, 25-21. Mississippi State Bulldogs out in front. Quick inbound. Both side. Dogs don't like that look. Dicing it up. Warren Park Lane gets the screen and lets the three fly. It's just wide on it. Can't leave her open like that. That's way too clean of a look. And another good look right there is it was picked up off the hardwood, but that shot won't go for Jasmine. They do a great job underneath. Just the, the rebounding intensity, a defensive intensity that Mississippi State plays with. And, you know, whistle. That was Raven Thompson for Chattanooga. That's her second. Brown Hager to the line, freshman from Shorewood, Illinois. Extends the four-point lead to five for Mississippi State. It's 26-21 Bulldogs. She's been great, 5'9", rated as a four-star recruit. She was the number 54 overall prospect in the country, the number 20 guard, according to ESPNW, coming out of high school. Yeah, Chattanooga's gone a little cold. They are scoreless in their last 222 of this. To open this second quarter of play, they were initially outscoring the Bulldogs. A couple of quick passes. Chattanooga taking their time. Cone, double team, flips it away to Farrell. Ellis Salvez. 
Can't penetrate. There's the spin move on the elbow and delivers it. Nice little ball down low. What a move from Ellis Saldez. That was great. Just a spin move got her immediately to the basket where she finished. That was great. Close game in Chattanooga. 27-23 Bulldogs. Goni to extend that lead and she will. They've really found that, that Goni really needs to be on the court more than, than she was earlier in the season. During the last couple of games for Mississippi State, she's gotten way more minutes than she's produced. The box to respond, trailing by six, 29-23. And Porter starts to take that inside right away the whistle. They got Carson Murphy on the illegal screen there. That was, uh, that was a tough call. Six-point game, 93 seconds left to play in this second period from McKenzie Arena. Lauren Park Lane. Trying to shake Ellis Saldez. Kicks it outside from the corner that goes. That was a great closeout from Raven Thompson, but just a better shot from Brown Hager. That was all net. 32-23, Bulldogs lead. Fueled by that deep three from the corner. Nice look. Mox working this around the three-point line. Good entry pass down to Raven Thompson. On the low post. Spins and passes this to the corner. Ellis Saldez wants three in the response from the Mox. We just talked about Ellis Saldez getting valuable minutes. And, man, she is really playing well. A six-point game, 40 seconds left in this first half. Bulldogs out in front. The drive, Brown Hager steps back and fires and too much on it as it rattles off the end of the iron. Big possession coming up here for Chattanooga. If you can get some points here, tighten that gap up a little bit. And it's, it's anybody's ball game in the second half. There's another look at that three. Thompson makes a great decision to pass it outside. Kaya Ellis Saldez buries it from long range. You called it. That, it was a great entry pass and, and really got the ball to where Chattanooga needs to get the ball to to initiate that offense. 20 seconds left to play in this first half. About a second and a half less on the shot clock. Thompson gives it off. Mox looking inside. Bulldogs in a defensive shell. Raven Thompson going to work. She's going to battle her way down inside off the glass. It's wide. Ball's loose. Two seconds. Here's the long shot, and it's short for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. So we go to the half in a close one, 32-26. Mississippi State leads the mocks. The entertaining first half game. I think we've got a, a basketball game on our hands here. I think this could be an instant classic. We'll take a break. Be back with more college basketball. Don't go anywhere. It's ESPN. And somehow I was blessed to have that opportunity, but I'm thankful, thankful for it. Great place to get started and a great place to have those memories and to see, and just to see what they're doing now. I am so proud and, and realize how thankful that I am and blessed to have had the opportunity to be able to UT Chattanooga. Fifty Seasons of Greatness presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and by Food City. You can find exclusive content and more on the history of Chattanooga women's basketball at GoMox.com. Welcome back here into McKenzie Arena. Here's a look at the highlights from the first half of play. And boy, was that exciting. Mississippi State's Bulldogs, they were hot all across the floor. That's Jordan hitting the shot. She's the leading scorer for the Bulldogs, and leading all scorers with 14 points already tonight, Will. Yeah, Mississippi State shooting 42% from the field and moving the basketball well. They got, uh, you know, that driving kick has really given Chattanooga some issues, some defensive confusion there, led to an open three. That was a great feat. Obviously, the whistle on the back end of that one, but Jordan really lighting it up and doing no wrong for Mississippi State's Bulldogs. Number three, Warren Park Lane. She's been hot tonight as well. Crossed 2,000 career points. Helped out by Jasmine Brown Haggard, the true freshman who's looking very good here in McKenzie Arena. Let's take a look at some of the highlights for our Chattanooga Mocs. 
UTC has been hot as well, scoring from the floor as we're in a six-point game at the half. This is Gwynn with a turnaround. Jay knocked that down. Cohen, the leading scorer for the Mox. Your thoughts on the Mox so far? Yeah, doing a, a good job, and then they got back to it towards the end of the half. But earlier, doing a great job in penetrating and kicked the three-point line. They've gotten great shooting from Hannah Cohn from outside who came in. Tops in the nation in three-point field goal percentage at around 60%. She's not doing anything to hurt herself in that regard. She's three of six so far in this ball game. Thrilled to see how this second half shakes out. Any final thoughts from you, final notes? Obviously, they're neck and neck in a lot of these statistical categories. How does a team get an edge in a close game like this down the stretch? It's who can who can subject the other team to their game plan. I mean, for Chattanooga, you know, they struggled a little bit when Mississippi State increases the tempo, trying to run up and down, and, and Chattanooga is just trying to get hands in passing lanes, trying to close out on shooters, trying to stay on the ground on pump fakes. Little things like that uh, could mean the big, big uh, issues for both sides moving forward. Thanks for being with us. If you're just tuning in, ESPN College Basketball from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm Gabriel Shry here with Will Floyd Dexter here in the McKenzie Arena. Number 21, Mississippi State Bulldogs on the road, battling the Chattanooga Mox. You see there on your screen, Michelle Clark Hurd at the helm today for the Bulldogs. Goni passes this back across, close side, Park Lane. Drives and floated that to the corner. Bulldogs in a bit of trouble. Ten on the shot clock, Park Lane. Going to take it herself. Backdoor pass. The intercept by the Mox. And one thing Mississippi State would like to do would get uh, Darion Rogers involved in the game. She is uh, 0 for 3 so far in this ballgame. Has not scored. Thompson hands it off to Gwynn. These two combine nearly 50% of all of Chattanooga's scoring this season. Raven Thompson loses it and dives for the ball as Jordan nearly gets on it. Now a conversation being had, and interesting parties abound, and now they're going to go jump ball. We've talked a lot about Raven Thompson tonight, sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. She led Langston Hughes to 85 wins and reached the GHSA state final in prep school, 1,300 points. This is Tony who takes the feed up top. Hangs on to it. Now the three ball for the Bulldogs, and she finds the bottom of the net. Yeah, the Chattanooga faithful wanted to travel on that, but they didn't get it. But a great kick out and an open shot there for Mississippi State. That's an important bucket to start this third quarter for the Bulldogs. They extend their lead to nine over the Mox. Uh, Lauren Park Lane is just continuing to cook here. She is carrying this club right now. Chattanooga's done a good job of controlling the pace and tempo here in the Genzi Arena tonight. Really, and, you know, games like this, it's it's easy to, to, if you're not careful, to get really blown out of the water. And I think Chattanooga really was important the first five minutes of this game, setting that tone early, and they were able to do that. Rogers with a nice sidestep and a long two. But they're losing a little bit of the grip right now as Mississippi State's on a run. Now the Bulldogs get some whiteboard time, talk strategy, and clearly that's paying off for them. 5 nothing here in this second half. Mox Porter walks back, shouting out to her teammates and sending Thompson to the close side. Win defended by Goni. No space initially. Now drives and fires the floater as she goes down hard. Mississippi State defensively, they're sacking off a little bit on Jada Gwynn, and they're really giving her that shot, and they'll trade an open shot from Jada Gwynn for a drive. I think they can defend that drive from her a little bit better. Jaden Gwynn this season, 74% at the charity strike. It's her first. See Jaden Gwynn, she's so good with the basketball, able to, to handle it really well. Really important gift for Sean Poppy and his Chattanooga club. Gwynn hits both of the line. That's a bank to a nine-point difference. Both of these teams had really good success in tournaments that they just played in. Chattanooga went 2-0 in the Daytona Beach Classic, and Mississippi State won the Van Chancellor Classic in Katy, Texas. 
Raven Thompson down to the post, and right away the whistle as she's trying to battle inside. Great job from Raven Thompson there. She's tough with the basketball. She's she's hard to separate from the basketball. I mean, she's not. She doesn't have great height, but she's just really good. Has really good handles and can rebound and is really good when you get her around the block. Here's another look at that foul. So, Chance of the old-fashioned three. Sorry, game. So she's so tough through contact. Also. It's a seven-point game. Here come the Bulldogs. Lauren Park Lane drives down to the mid post, turns around, and can't drop it. A second chance as the whistle sounds. Those second chance points will kill you. Montague did a great job of getting down low, elevating herself for the ball. Look at that height. How do you compete with that? Nothing you can do there if you're Carson Murphy. I mean, she just uh, went up a couple of floors that Carson Murphy's elevator doesn't go to. She's going to be really special for Mississippi State and playing college basketball for a long time. Still a true freshman. Goes around, won't go. Remains a nine-point game. Eddie Porter, the handoff. Olaf's daughter kicked it to Gwynn. Defended by Jordan. She'll try to penetrate. And this one rolls all around and won't drop. Boy, J.D. Gwynn has had that same shot a few times tonight. She's two for eight now from the field. Just cannot get that, uh, that little four or five footer to fall tonight. Jordan with a mail off the glass. A nice look. It's an 11 point game. Jaquela Jordan will get it done, though. That's, uh, that is her bread and butter right there. Jaquela Jordan, senior from New Orleans, Louisiana. She led her team to four straight state championships and earned MVP honors in high school. Really talented. Wendy, she's a senior in the mind-blowing stat that I read for her. 98 straight starts in her career. That is amazing. That's wild. Chattanooga to respond on the offensive end of the floor. What a pass. So important. When you get baseline for any basketball player, it just opens up so much for you. Secret Hollis daughter got baseline and a great look. And another good pass down low, but this time Montague Jocelyn. And they got Carson Murphy, I believe, on that. That's her second. So Chattanooga now with four different individuals with two fouls. Murphy going to come off the floor. She's off to a great start this year. She started at all eight, seven points per game, a couple of rebounds every time out. From beyond the arc, 42% entering tonight. Jordan. Driving and firing as the whistle sounds on the turnaround floater. They call the travel there, I believe. Yep. She's laughing. Yeah. Gave the old spot, the wry smile, <laughs> right? <laughs> Chattanooga, a couple of passes just over the timeline on that one. Gwen keeping her toes in play. Eddie Porter. A couple of handoffs. Chattanooga looking for some space. Olaf's daughter from in front of the Mox bench. Thompson drives into the paint and fighting down inside as she's fouled. Yeah, Chattanooga going a little bit bigger. They got Kaylin Farrell in there right now. And Hannah Cohn. Haven't seen a lot of her in this third quarter. So Hannah Cohn came out very splashy. She was leading Chattanooga in points at the half and still is with nine. Three for six tonight from the floor and looking good from long range. Thompson knocks down her first at the line. I mentioned she was so good at Langston. He was 1,300 career points in high school. Also, Really successful academically. She got an associate's degree when she was still in high school. That's pretty good. I, 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 you know what I got when I finished high school? A high school diploma. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Rattles around and won't go. Mox get the board. Porter from the elbow back outside. Thompson wants a better look. Drives and fires and gets that to go. And again, it's a close one. We talked about J.D. Gwynn struggling a little bit with her shot, so Chattanooga needs Raven Thompson to come up big here. 
Bulldogs leading by five, the closest it's been in this second half. Here's the double screens. That's what Mississippi State likes to do to you. They'll have one roll to the basket. Parkway drives the floater off the glass, taken down by the Mocks. Very tough shot. Eddie Porter. Faking the handoff and going to Quinn. Defended by Goni. Going to try and go around her and it's swatted away. So tough. We talked about Goni's length. I mean, it's just... Her arms are so long, that's an easy block for her. And she is going to work on offense. Down low, and the floater goes for Turkayla Jordan. Eddie Porter, back and forth with Jada Gwynn. Olaf's daughter, a fake bump. Chattanooga really taking their time offensively. Five on the shot clock. Quinn dicing it up. In trouble. Drives and looks like she might have taken a step. Yeah, just lost the handle. Bobbled it a little bit and that pivot foot slid. Close game in Chattanooga. 43-36. The Bulldogs lead the mocks. We'll take a break and be back with more Colin Toops in just a minute on ESPN. When you order a Big Mac in the McDonald's app today, you'll earn points you can redeem for a free Big Mac in your future. Future, you say. Thanks. Earn free food with the app. It's in-season tournament time. It's NBA or ESPN time. Basketball supported by EBB, Chattanooga's number one internet. At the gig and enjoy 1,000 megabits per second of speed for seamless HD streaming, lightning-fast internet, fast downloads, and lag-free gaming. And Food City, the official supermarket of Chattanooga Athletics. Food City, value every day. And by Chattanooga Coca-Cola, the official refreshment provider of Chattanooga Athletics. Welcome back. Fun game in McKenzie Arena in Chattanooga, Tennessee, 43-36. Bulldogs leading and driving there. Bit of contact, Jordan, fellow beneficiary. This has been a very even ball game, statistically speaking. Both teams shooting above 40% from the field. Both teams shooting above 50% from three. Jordan, 82% at the line this season. First one won't go. Mississippi State has led this game for almost 23 minutes, so they've been out in front almost the whole time. Second one drops. A little bit of cushion for the Bulldogs. 44-36, an eight-point game. Eddie Porter defended heavily by Park Lane as she battles her way up the floor and hands it off to Cone. Cone tied with Raven Thompson to be the leading scorer of the Mocs tonight, both with nine points. Porter floats it across from in front of the Chattanooga bench, a bit too much for Seeker Olaf's daughter. Yeah, Chattanooga's really spread the scoring around. They have no player in double digits, but six of seven have scored. Bulldogs, the sidestep, and the long two is short. Another rebound for Addie Porter. She has seven. <laughs> Porter's lighting it up. <laughs> Olaf's daughter to Hannah Cone. Oh, a quick drive, and Goni not making life easy. Fouling down inside, she'll go to the line. Really good take from Kalen Farrell. That was an aggressive move to the basket and got the foul. They had a great start to the year. Played in all eight games. Averaging nearly four points per game, a handful of rebounds as well. And she's 74% from the line. A junior from Tullahoma, Tennessee. One for two at the line. Bulldogs to Park Lane. Trying to go inside along the block. 
can't beat Al Olaf's daughter. Here's the entry pass to Goni, and she takes a step before taking the shot. And she's going to be really special as time goes on for them. Transferred from Miami. We talked about her length a lot tonight. She was the number 56 overall player in the class of 2020, according to ESPNW, but also the top recruit out of the state of Nebraska that year. Porter slows it up in front of the Mox bench and talking with Coach Poppy. Stroman the delivery to Gwen. Two minutes left in this third period. It's a close one, just seven points between the Bulldogs and the Mox. Anna Cohn in trouble. Corral keeps it moving. Corral going to take it herself and maybe a hand up for Montague. Park Lane, long feed to Jordan, and she takes a step. On the defensive end for Mississippi State, what we're seeing now that on those high screens that we're Chattanooga is trying to get Anna Cohn off of, they're doubling Anna Cohn off of that screen, not respecting the screener at all. Jada Gwynn beating out Rodgers to the corner. That's Porter who drains it. Just a great look, a wide open three for Addie Porter. Porter. And that's her first three points of the ball game. Eddie Porter was great all the way back, dating back to her days as a prep player at Lebanon High School. State final for the first time since 82 for that. Ball's loose, and somehow the mocks come away with it. I thought Jordan had that. There were two Chattanooga mocks on the floor for that loose ball that time. Porter and Thompson leading the way up the floor. 65 seconds left in this third period. It's a four-point game. Win the entry pass from the mid post. Thompson outside to Porter. Here's some space. She makes her way down low and lays it in. It's a two-point game. Addie Porter had a couple of different options there, and she, she took the one that was closer to the basket to Jada Gwynn. Great ball movement for Chattanooga. 20 on the shot clock, 37 in the third period in this SEC SOCON tilt on ESPN. College basketball, thanks for being with us from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Park Lane battles it in the paint and kicks it out to Rogers. Cone making life difficult. Trying to get it away as the shot clock expires. They're saying maybe too much contact. Oh, wow. Shot clock. I mean, the, the buzzer was going off, and they're going to get a foul call. Sean Poppy is incensed. Now they're going to they're gonna get together about it, and they may go to the monitor to see what happened first. Was there a foul first, or did the shot clock expire first? Yeah, they're going to take a look at just that. I think that's the right decision. If you can if you can take a review, if you can take a second look at it, make sure you're making the right call, why not? Now, if you're calling a foul, I think it, it definitely occurred with time on the shot clock. So I have I have a hunch that this is going to stand up here. Yeah, you see one second on the, the clock, ball clearly out of the hand. Go to the review table on the opposite end of the floor. We're in Chattanooga, Tennessee, two-point game. Mississippi State Bulldogs, Chattanooga. Well, what do you think? Is this is this crucial? Does it not matter yet? We're not late enough. Oh, I think it. I mean, it, I think it's crucial just in the ebb and flow of this ball game. I and mean, you know, it's a for Chattanooga. You, you played so well defensively, and to, to commit a foul there right at the end of the shot clock really disappointing. This game has been neck and neck from the get go, and it just continues to go that way. Tight, tight, tight. Yeah, this is going to be a two shot foul. And I believe they're gonna. It's gonna be 18.3 seconds on the clock. Here's another look Ooh. down on the floor. Yeah. A lot of basketball on that uh, defensive play by Hannah Cone. Rogers, a transfer from DePaul University for the Bulldogs, averaging nine points per game this season. Number 19 recruit in the country, and she gets the first off the iron and won't go. 
Yeah, Rogers can really shoot it. I mean, she's averaging nine points a game for Mississippi State. We talked earlier about how she's been a little quiet so far in this ballgame. One for two at the line. We've got a three-point game in Chattanooga. 18 seconds left in this third quarter as Thompson will inbound. Rogers has been really special. A two-time All-Big East performer before transferring to Mississippi State. Averaged 17 points per game last year as the ball's second leading scorer. This is Porter. Ten seconds left in this quarter. Cone gave it off to Thompson. Five. Thompson drives. Two seconds. Fires off the glass and it goes as we end the third period in Chattanooga. Will, how about it? What a great decision by Raven Thompson. And Mississippi State was really defending against the last second three there, but Raven Thompson noticed that and a really heady play by her taking it to the basket. And you just you just love how she always keeps her wits about her. We'll take a break with these two teams and be back with the fourth period, a one-point game in Chattanooga on ESPN. Is it the challenges we conquer together? Maybe it's the people's lives we touch every single day. So, what makes a life a good one? You'll have to figure that one out for yourself. This holiday season at PetSmart, buy three dog treats and get the fourth free. Plus, earn... SEC SoCon Tilt. Looking like this will come down to the wire. It's been about neck and neck all night long. That one sails the pass, a feed inside by Park Lane over the baseline. That's the 13th turnover for Mississippi State. Eddie Porter will run the floor for Chattanooga, defended by Lauren Parkland. Shouting out, bringing Cone across. Flips the orange over to Gwynn. Gwynn to the corner. Cone defended by Goni. In the cone, trying to create some space. Now Eddie Porter knifes her way through traffic, and the shot is short. Ported out of the air by Brown Hager. Bulldogs up the floor with pace. In trouble, and this is lost. Now, one official says Mississippi State ball. Chattanooga players reacted. He, she asked for help from the other official, and he confirmed. Jordan, with 20 on the shot clock, kicks it across to Park Lane. Lauren Park Lane defended by Porter. Goni thought about pulling up for that three, driving and has it swatted away by the Mox. Great block down inside by Carson Murphy using her leg. I think Jaquela Jordan got a little banged up on the screen on the opposite end, and she's wincing. She was holding her midsection. Scoreless in this fourth quarter, and Gwynn will snap that streak as the Mox take the lead. Why just one? Gwynn's first step so good, and she just glides to the basket. Jada Gwynn with a nice play. She's up to 12 points tonight, 5 for 12 from the floor. Jordan from just inside the three-point line is off the mark. Eddie Porter will run the floor. Seven rebounds tonight. She's got three. Jada Gwynn from the wing down to the corner. Here's the drive. Murphy with a pump and can't get it to go. Well, oh, Carson Murphy from point blank range cannot get it to fall. Montague bringing it up the floor. These two teams are going to take a break and we will as well. Chattanooga out in front. 7.51 left to play on ESPN. Catch it all and start streaming NFL Plus today. Plans start at $6.99 a month. It's in-season tournament time. It's NBA or ESPN time. That's our move. A new season of women's college hoops on the networks of ESPN. Welcome back to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Here's a look at what's up next at home, presented by Real Estate Partners, Chattanooga and Realtor Jeff Ramsey. Jeff uses his real experience to deliver real service and real results. This is JeffRamsey.com. 
They have double dip next weekend for Chattanooga. The women's team goes first on Saturday and the men's team on Sunday. Very close game here in McKenzie Arena. A one-point game, Chattanooga, with the lead for the first time since the opening minutes of this. And the step, this will go back to the box. Mississippi State really struggling right now to get a good look. They've just turned the ball over once again, and Chattanooga on a 10-2 run. They can go into Mock's way right now. Mock's are on fire right now. Largest lead of the night for them. Just two points it came back in the opening minutes. 46-45 in the SoCon SEC tilt. Yeah, the last field goal for Mississippi State was over three minutes ago. That was the Jerkayla Jordan layup. Quarter along the three-point line to hand off to Cove. Quick entry pass. Thompson on the low post in trouble. Wide. Open. This one is just wide on it. Pretty good look, though. And, and what we talked about earlier in the game, Chattanooga relies on that inside play and kicked it to the outside to that three-point line. That's their offense. Mark Lane shovels this to the corner, and the three goes to the Bulldogs. Wow, that was uh, Poe on that one. And that was a pure shot for the sophomore from Meridian, Mississippi. That busts up a 10-2 run for the Mox. Take another look back at that Lauren Park Lane three-pointer. She crossed 2,000 career points tonight. She's hitting them from deep. Look at that. It's a great look there, and I think they got uh, Park Lane on the foul call there on that last possession. That's going to be her second. Yeah. This is Jada Gwynn. Gwynn leading the mocks in points with 12. They really sag off her. They're just daring her to shoot from out there. Murphy is blocked. Gets it back from the straightaway as the shot clock sounds. That'll go back to the Bulldogs. Yeah, Chattanooga would rather Jada Gwynn keep that and, and get a shot inside. She tried to kick out to Carson Murphy, and Carson really left with no other option to put a shot up. Mississippi State, they've led for almost 90% of the game. They're leading by two. Jordan across, here's the three, and that one sails on her. Wynn comes down with it. Six minutes left to play between Chattanooga and Mississippi State. Poppy calling out to Porter as she hands it off to Cone. Cone finesses this down inside. In the mid post, there's the move, and she kisses it in off the glass to tie us at 48, our second tie of the night. Carson Murphy missed for point blank her last time down there, but that was a great pivot, step through, move for two. To respond, here's Jordan the Bulldogs. In trouble down low if the whistle sounds. That's a travel. She takes a step. We've seen a few of those in the second half for the Bulldogs. I think that's a third one that we've seen, and, and, and maybe the last ten trips down the, the court for Mississippi State. Time with five and a half left to play. Porter running the floor for Chattanooga's Mox. Anna Cohn, that's a deep three. Oh, she hit that from her hometown, Alito, Florida. NBA, WNBA, NCAA, that's a three in all of them. Whoa! 51-48, Mox out in front by three. Here's the floater from mid-range, and that's automatic with a true freshman, Miracle Shepard. Really good take, and that throws some water on this fire a little bit. Porter. Four and a half left to play now. Seagram almost got her, gives it off to Gwynn. Gwynn gets it to Cone again. I thought she was going to pull up. Bulldogs are going to have to defend her out there. I mean, I, I think everybody <laughs> thought she was going to pull up. <laughs> you could feel the air sucked out of the roundhouse. Three seconds on the shot clock. Gwynn from mid range. Knocks it down. It's a three point game again. There's that mid range shot for Jada Gwynn that Chattanooga's really missed in this ball game so far. She got that one to fall. Big points. Park Lane loses the ball. Hannah Cone in the lock. She's going to slow it up. We're going to take care of the basketball with four minutes left to play. 
Mississippi State's 15th turnover. They came in averaging around 11 per game. Quinn near the elbow, defended by Shepard. Outside to Porter. She kicks to Cone, and she takes another three. This time it's off the mark and pops off the top of the backboard. Yeah, These two are going to take a break, a three-point game in Chattanooga. One more look at that three-pointer. We'll be back with more college basketball in just a moment on ESPN. Is it the challenges we conquer together? Maybe it's the people's lives we touch every single day. So, what makes a life a good one? You'll have to figure that one out for yourself. Back to Chattanooga, Tennessee, there's Hannah Cohn, the true freshman. Four from eight from long range tonight, 12 points. She leads the NCAA in three-point shooting percentage well. Chattanooga has a club shooting it well from three, 43.8%. So both these clubs shooting it decently, but right now Mississippi State's just having a problem with the turnovers and, and the, really the unforced stuff. A few traveling calls, they, they had a, an entry pass that sailed out of bounds. So uh, really things that Mississippi State has not done a lot of this year, they're doing it here today. Chattanooga in the driver's seat for the moment, leading by three at home against the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Lots seven and one, Bulldogs eight and one, number 21 in the nation. What a move, quick floater, and this one is short. Lots get the board. They've done a great job on capitalizing on extra possessions tonight. Absolutely. And those extra possessions and the turnovers we talked of, Mississippi State, 16 turnovers have led to 15 Chattanooga points. This Chattanooga team has not defeated a top 25 opponent since 2014. And sails on her over the baseline. Yeah, miscommunication there. Jada Gwynn thought Hannah Cone was going to continue the cut to the basket. Hannah Cone pulled up. Mark Lane gives it off to Jordan. Bulldogs working it all around. Less than three to play in Chattanooga. Here's the drive and the floater short as the whistle sounds. When Mississippi State needs a bucket, they're going to go to a couple of different people, but one of them is Lauren Park Lane. So quick to the basket, and her and Ja'Kayla Jordan have just played fantastically so far. It's Ja'Kayla Jordan now with 19 points, Park Lane with 11. She gets her first good for 12. Here's another look at that from the baseline. Mark Lane going up top. Addie Porter doing all she can there. Lane, one for two at the strike on that trip. Porter in the mox. Leading by two, two and a half left to play. Shepard, the true freshman, harassing her. The handoff to go. Sequinola's daughter. Thompson looking inside. A pump turning around the floater short. Lots of perimeter motion for Chattanooga. Led to a pretty good look for Raven Thompson. Jordan through traffic. Now slowing it up just a bit as Gwynn cuts her off. Montague using that frame takes it into the low post. And a lot of contact as the whistle goes. That's going to be an offensive foul on Mississippi State. And Raven Thompson, they're checking on her. She hit the court. Very hard. Carson Murphy going to check in for Hannah Cone. Here's another look. Montague coming inside. Thompson. Feet are moving. That's a good call. Yeah, remember, you don't have to have your feet set. You just have to be in that defensive position, occupy that space first. And Raven Thompson did a good job moving her feet. Thompson running the floor, defended by Shepard. Extending that defense out on J.D. Gwynn a little bit more now. They haven't been doing that. Gwynn has to pick it up. Porter's got a lot of room. Went for a trip inside, then kicked it to Thompson, who lost three, and she finds the bottom of the net. Addie Porter with a great drop of the basket and found Raven Thompson standing at the three-point line. Raven did a little pump fake at first, but, boy, it was true the second time she looked at it. And a timeout on the floor in a five-point game. 144 left to play. The Chattanooga Mox out front. The Bulldogs got to take a moment and talk whiteboard here. 
Yeah, absolutely. Chattanooga, three of their last four from the field. Shayna Glenn, four for her last five. Raven Thompson, also four for her last five. And here's the fourth. Beautiful three ball from Raven Thompson. She's electric tonight. The mock's out in front by five. The Bulldogs are going to have to string something together here in the closing moments, starting to run out of time. This crowd really getting into it now. And we talked about how significant this would be for Chattanooga if they could hold on to this in the top 25 the victory. This is the seventh meeting all time between these two. There's another look at that three by Raven Thompson and forced the timeout. And it wasn't a pump fake, it was a fake pass. And that's all it took to freeze the defense, and she drained it. Chattanooga's mascot, Scrappy, firing up the crowd. As you can see him there, headed back to the tunnel for a break after that run across the floor. Less than two to play between these two. We've talked a lot of numbers. One final look at our leading scores. Jordan, 19.7 for 12 from the floor for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Park Lane, who crossed 2,000 career points playing college basketball tonight. She's got 12, 4 for 9 from the floor. She's also 3 for 4 from beyond the arc. Same amount of attempts as Powell, but obviously more efficient at 75%. Somebody the Bulldogs might look to in a late situation. And on the other side of the ball, the box have Hannah Cohen. She's leading the nation in three-point shooting percentage, so someone to watch from long range down the stretch as well. And Chattanooga just sucked her out. It's going to be interesting to see what five Chattanooga will answer here as we get down to crunch time. It'll be Carson Murphy, Jada Gwynn, Olaf's daughter, Raven Thompson, and Addie Porter for Chattanooga. Mississippi State really going with that same five they started out with. Shepard Powell Rogers, Park Lane, and Jordan all on the floor for the Bulldogs. Park Lane going to take it herself. The floater's wide. Hawks get it back. 90 seconds to play in a five point game. Seagram Olaf's daughter delivers it to Gwynn. She stops on the wing. So it came with Jordan out to make her life difficult. That was an adult decision by Jada Gwynn, pulling that ball out. They're going to get a foul call underneath, Gabe. That's going to be on Jerkayla Jordan. It'll be her third. 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 Porter looks it quickly to hand off back to her. She's defended by Park Lane. Trying to shake her all the way back. 14 on the shot clock. Mox trying to burn that up. You'd love to get a quality look if you're Chattanooga with around five, four or five seconds on the shot clock. Seven as Gwynn takes it from mid-range. It's short. Five seconds on the shot clock and a quality look, but I think Chattanooga's going to get the ball back. And the sophomore gets a hand on that and finds its way over the baseline. That is going to go back to the Mox. Quick into the corner and back off the floor again. 60 seconds exactly on the clock here in McKenzie Arena. Porter looks one way, now the other. On the floor. Oh, this is going to be a turnover for Chattanooga. I think Addie Porter was anticipating some contact that didn't really ever arrive, and she just let the ball go out of bounds. Quick timeout. And that's a turnover the Bulldogs of Mississippi State really needed. Really needed to get the ball back and some time to work with it here. 58.6 seconds in a five-point game. Here's a look at what's coming up next for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. They're driving just down the road, December 11th, Kennesaw State, then Jackson State, Memphis, Colorado State, and Mississippi Valley State. Good looks for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and then conference play will open up on January 4th for Mississippi State, and for everyone else for that matter, after the first of the year, they... They open up with Vanderbilt, and then they, they get a team that's pretty good. I mean, you may have heard of them, South Carolina. Right? Just once or twice. The AP number one, the unanimous AP number one. Long ball to the close side. Shepard gets aerial for that. Rogers trying to sidestep Seager and Olaf's daughter. And the whistle, she took a step. Boy, that has got to be at least the fifth traveling call on the Bulldogs this ball game, and Chattanooga's going to take a timeout. 54 and a half seconds left to play in a five-point matchup. 56-51, Chattanooga's Mox out in front in the late stages. Here's a look at what's coming next for the Mox of Chattanooga. 
First, they're going to host North Alabama. That's coming up on the ninth and traveling to Lipscomb. Hosting Eastern Kentucky to Coastal Carolina on December 20th. And then battling Michigan State on December 21st. Yeah, Chattanooga still has a, an in-season tournament, the Cherokee Invitational. They'll take on Coastal Carolina on the 20th before Christmas and then get either Michigan State or Richmond. So a, a nice in-season tournament there with, with the in-season tournaments. Both of these clubs have had great success so far. Well, Will, what's your sentiment? If you're on the bench right now with the Bulldogs, what are you saying to those Mississippi State five that are going to be on the hardwood? Push everything out on, on defensively. You got to increase the pressure. I think you got to push everything out away from the three-point line. See if you can force Chattanooga into a turnover. But time is of the essence right now. 40, uh, 54 and a half seconds on the clock and a full shot clock for Mississippi State. You're getting close to, to foul time. Also, Chattanooga has not beat a top 25 opponent since 2014. Mississippi State's Bulldogs number 21. Almost done. On the floor to Gwen. J.D. Gwen in trouble. Jordan reaching in there. She's hanging on to it. And now the whistle. Uh, they pointed to Sean Poppy. I think they thought he called a timeout, but, but he did not. So it's going to be a jump ball instead. And it's going to be possession arrow Chattanooga. <laughs> they looked at Sean Poppy and he just was like, what? I didn't, I didn't call a timeout. Got quiet real quick. <laughs> Chattanooga onto the floor. All lost daughter is fouled intentionally by Rogers. Yep, there you go. Come down to the free throw shooting contest. All lost daughter entering tonight. Only three trips to the line. She converted all three. Short inbound. Around Goni finds Porter. Porter fouled right away by Park Lane. That's going to be all the, the fouls that Mississippi State has to give. So there'll be two shots for Chattanooga for the rest of the way. Chattanooga so far this season shooting 76% from the free throw line. Porter 17 of 24. That's 71%. Her first trip to the line tonight. First one too much on it. Skips off the back side of the iron and pops back out. Junior knocks down her second. Makes it a six-point game between the Mocs and the Bulldogs, 57-51. Addie Porter is such a competitor. She's upset with herself of not cashing in both. But a big, a big free throw nonetheless gets it to a six-point game. Close, close, close as we go down the wire. And here's a look at those numbers. Now, it's interesting because those were neck and neck at the half, but now they flipped. Shooting percentage from the floor in favor of Chattanooga, Will. Yeah, look at points in the paint. And a lot of those have been on drive, little transition opportunities. But Chattanooga outplaying Mississippi State in the paint. The turnover number has been humongous. Absolutely. Mississippi State, you know, you, you brought it up a moment ago. A lot of travels, a lot of turnovers. Can't afford those. Rogers from Chicago, Illinois, will inbound. If you're Sean Poppy, you just don't want any fouls here. Don't want any fouls on three-point shooters, especially. Park Lane, this is short, gets it back, wanted a second chance, slotted away, the Mocs have it. Porter's foul. You get one of these to fall, it's going to make it tough. Porter tonight, 50% the line, as you saw just a moment ago, went one for two on the season. Very successful at the charity strike. 18 of 25, just over 70%. Here's another look down inside where Gwynn got a hand on that. Aggressive swat of the ball by J.D. Gwynn there. Got all ball. And I think Chattanooga's done a great job as Addie Grace Porter knocks down the first of, of weathering the runs that Mississippi State has had. Chattanooga trailed most of this ball game and, and really just kept at it. Tony, Park Lane, Rogers, Jordan all out on the floor for the Bulldogs. Chattanooga now going to apply some full court pressure just to kind of eat up some clock here. Eight point game, 35 seconds. 
Clark Lane picking her way down the hardwood. Going to take it all the way to the house. That's a clutch bucket. Cuts down the lead of the Mox to six. Here comes Porter through traffic. Crosses the timeline. Miracle Shepard holding off as the fans get loud. Mississippi State not going to foul. Shot clock's off. The Mox are going to win it by six. They upset the number 21 Mississippi State Bulldogs. Their first win against a top 25 opponent since 2014. Unbelievable effort for Chattanooga as Eddie Grace Porter chucks the ball in the air. And what a game for the Chattanooga Mox in front of a great crowd here today.